Hey, what's going on guys? Brady here in my living room and I just wanted to make a short video. Um, obviously being Resurrection Sunday, being Easter, um, I don't wanna just be cliche and kind of follow, you know, what so many people are doing. Um, but this is honestly my favorite day of the entire year. So I felt like it would be appropriate to come on and just share my heart a little bit and talk about uh, what this day signifies. And if you could give me maybe four or five minutes, I believe that uh, what I share could really encourage your heart. It could empower you and it could give you uh, maybe the strength that you need in this season. So I wanted to read uh, out of the book of Romans, we got a big old study Bible, but out of the book of Romans uh, in chapter three, the scriptures say that in verse 23, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So all have sinned. So every person everywhere has sinned against God. Sinning against God separates us from God because God is holy. God has a, this glorious standard of holiness. And when we sin, we become severed from that holiness. So all people everywhere are sinful and they need a way to get back to God, to have relationship with God. He who is perfect and holy and just and good and loving and all those things. So we keep reading. I emphasize all people because I think sometimes we can be uh, a little self-righteous, especially here in America. Uh, we go to church. I used to wear a cross necklace and I was doing drugs. So just because you go to church or wear a cross necklace or have on your Facebook that you're a Christian, um, doesn't really mean that you're actually saved. The scriptures say to examine yourself to see if we're actually in the faith. So step one, realize we're all sinful. We all have sinned. We fall short of God's glory. But then step two, verse 24 says, and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. So, the answer to humanity's sin problem is Jesus Christ. The Bible says that sin was condemned in the flesh of Jesus. And he who knew no sin became sin. It says that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse. For cursed is every man who hangs on a cross. So the only way that we can find righteousness with God and ultimately eternal life is through the man, Jesus Christ. He came and he lived a sinless life. He was crucified for the sins of the people. And on the third day, this day, the Father resurrected him by the Spirit of glory, by the Holy Spirit, to vindicate or to prove that his sacrifice was sufficient. So God the Father proved his son by resurrecting him on this day. And so it's important that we understand that Jesus is the only way that we can be forgiven. The Bible says there's no other name given among men by which we can be saved but the name of Jesus. So Jesus gives us life. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to God the Father except through him. So I encourage you no matter where you're at or no matter how much you've heard about Jesus or no matter how many times you have been 
uh, to church, no matter how many times you've you know, heard the gospel, if you haven't repented and turned from your sin, which is ultimately turning from yourself and turn to the Lord, to Jesus, if you haven't done that, this is your moment. This is your moment to say, Jesus, I don't want to live in that sin any longer. It could be pornography, it could be envy, it could be pride, it could be jealousy, it could be uh, anger. There's all kinds of sins that we give ourselves to. And Jesus, it says, who the sun sets free is free indeed. So I encourage you with that. Jesus is the only way to be set free and he's the only way to have eternal life. So this short video is to encourage your heart in that truth. And all you have to do, the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So right now you can call out to Jesus and be saved. So I'm just gonna lead uh, you in a prayer. If you're listening, if you feel the Spirit of God moving on your heart, I just encourage you to follow me in this prayer. And as you're praying, make it from the heart. Make it a prayer that's not just repetitious and saying words, but really try to, try to open your heart and invite God to speak and invite God into those places. So let's pray. So Father God, we believe that you sent Jesus. We believe that he's the one that died for our sin. And I'm asking right now that you would cleanse me with his holy blood. And I'm asking right now that you would give me the Holy Spirit and seal me for eternal life. I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. I turn from my sin and I turn to his Lordship. Forgive me and empower me to walk this life with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, guys, so I believe that if that was sincere, if you were sincere in that prayer that the Spirit of God just moved in, and the Bible says that there's angels that are rejoicing because you are now the kings. You are now owned by Jesus, and you are a part of the kingdom of heaven. You've come out of darkness into light. So it's powerful. Yes and amen. I love you. I bless you. And know that this life is about that long and eternity goes on and on and on. So we can live forever with Jesus and it's going to be glorious. All right, guys. Have a good night. Bye.